What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today we're going to take a look and listen to Martin O'Malley, the Commissioner of Social Security, talk a little bit more at the Senate hearing about Social Security and Social Security reform. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, if you guys can do me a favor, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here, so by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. And just a reminder, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter and Threads, you can at the TEC Show Live. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. This is uh, Senator Carper asking him questions about Social Security. Here we go. Thanks very much. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, well, it's uh, great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you for taking this on. And uh, part of me kind of uh, envies you for taking an issue, taking on a, 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 a challenge of this uh, magnitude, and, and really jumping, jumping right into it and uh, getting, uh, getting a, a run and start. So congratulations. Uh, we're here to help, and uh, we're thank grateful you. for your service in this, in this regard. Um, I thank the chairman, and I thank the ranking member for, for bringing you back before us uh, so soon. Um, and uh, I think it was in 2023, uh, this committee uh, con considered uh, your nomination. Uh, seems longer, but uh, it was 2023. But uh, we're pleased. I was pleased to support your nomination, and and uh, but really pleased to see the strong bipartisan support that uh, that it that it received. And for the first time, I, I think in close to a decade, 10 years, our, our committee will meet is meeting to review the budget of the Social Security Administration, which has responsibility to provide support for our seniors and individuals with disabilities. Uh, as, as you mentioned in your testimony, amid historic underfunding and understaffing, the Social Security Administration is, is facing what we call, and you probably do too, a customer service a crisis. Um, the average hold time we've talked, we've been discussing this already, but I'm told the, uh, the average hold time for an individual wanting to speak to a staff member with the Social Security Administration is 38 minutes. The average American waits about 220 days with over seven miles for an initial decision about their disability status. These numbers are, are more than disappointing. They're shocking. They're, they're just not acceptable. If they, if if they are true, I'm, I, uh, and I would leave that up to you. But Social Security Administration's programs can't succeed without first delivering uh, gold standard service to all of our Americans. I'm encouraged that the, uh, the agency is uh, maybe prioritizing serving those with the greatest a need in ensuring disability applicants with the most severe conditions are given an initial decision within 30 days or less. The last time you uh, were uh, good enough to appear before our, uh, our, our committee, I recommended that you uh, talk with Danny Werfel, Commissioner of the Internal Revenue uh, Service. And like you, he's inherited an agency with a customer service uh, crisis. And uh, uh, while I, I know you have got a tough uh, job ahead of you, I'm encouraged that the president's budget for fiscal year 2025 makes critical investments to uh, customer service at the Social Security Administration. My question is, uh, should, the, should the president's budget uh, be enacted? How would you leverage uh, the, this investment to uh, improve the agency's customer service? You've talked about this a bit already, but especially uh, for reducing call and disability claim wait times. and. Uh, can you speak uh, to the unique customer service challenges Social Security Administration is facing and how the agency, Social Security agency, can learn from uh, uh, Danny Werfel's success at the IRS? Yes, sir. Thank you, Senator. The, uh, in the President's budget is a very, very uh, uh, strong step in a better direction for this agency's customer service. Uh, of the uh, 15.4 billion proposed in the president's budget, our plan is to increase frontline staff serving our customers by $269 million, uh, to increase the staffing at our teleservice centers. They have an attrition rate of 24% a year in our teleservice centers. You can only imagine the sort of stress that people encounter on an underperforming system when people have been on hold for 45 minutes or an hour. Nobody's coming in pleasant after waiting on hold for benefits they've already earned. We had okay, so I, I want to stop right there, but that, that's interesting, right? What he's saying, the attrition rate is 24%. And he asked a year, and he didn't respond to that, but I'm, I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. So they're losing a lot of employees, and he brought up a good point. If you're waiting on the phone for 
30 minutes plus 38 minutes just to talk to someone, of course you're going to be upset. That person that is waiting for that 38 minutes, of course they're going to be upset when a person comes to a, you know, answer their question. And then if they don't have an answer to their question, which some questions you don't have an answer right off, you have to kind of tell them, you know, you have to tell them, okay, you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to do that. Could you imagine how upset people would be? Rightfully so. And so if you're a person that's working for the Social Security Administration and every phone call is, goes pretty much the same way, oh, wow, it's about time that you came on. We've, I've been waiting for 30 minutes. I've been waiting for 30, you know. So after doing that all day, day after day, it's taxing. And I can see that attrition rate being at 24%. I would think it'd be even higher because people are just like, this isn't worth it. It's not worth the money. I'll go. I can work in another call center and, you know, for a, you know, a company, a, a major companies, they're not, they don't have people waiting for 38 minutes. You know, they, they, I mean, it's a business, so they want to be able to answer those questions and, and get those calls through in a timely manner because if they don't, then they'll lose business. But when it comes to Social Security, unfortunately, you pay into this system your whole life, 30, 40 years, paying into Social Security, paying in that payroll contribution. And then when you get to the point where you now you're starting to collect, I mean, what, what are you going to do? Say, I, I, you know, you can't go. There's nowhere to go is what I'm saying. <laughs> you're receiving Social Security benefits. You can't go to another company. Whereas if it's a private company, yes, you can go. I can go from one phone provider to another phone provider or, you know, say cable provider to another cable provider if I don't like their business or I have to wait too long to get customer service. I have that option. You don't have that option with Social Security. You have a Social Security or you don't. There's no alternative to Social Security in, in a sense. Um, you know, there's no other. Of course, there are alternatives to retirement, but... Social Security is not your sole retirement. You should have something else set up. So very interesting what he's saying. Plan to invest $85 million to bring down the backlogs in our processing centers. Some of you no doubt get calls from people that said, I got a notice from Social Security saying they should process my claim in 30 days. It's been 90 days. I haven't heard anything from them. So we've got to get those backlogs down. Uh, the biggest investment would be at the initial disability stage. 50 states, Delaware, Maryland, uh, uh, Louisiana, all have their own DDS offices that make the initial determinations. Those backlogs have grown and grown and grown. In fact, in my prepared rem uh, remarks before you, I believe I have a map of the United States with the 50. That map is supposed to be shaded. The green is supposed to represent states that get it done in 120 days. There is no green on the continental United States, uh, uh, across the South, particularly acute backlogs. So that's why we would invest $2.8 billion to staff up the DDSs where attrition has been great and where half of their staff seem to be in training status and therefore not as productive as they could or should be if they fully, you know, had a grasp of uh, the material. We're doing some other technology, some things with technology, uh, but none of those things can make up for the yawning gap between having the highest number of beneficiaries in our history and the lowest staffing we've had in 27 years. We're getting a lot of great sort of bunt singles to get on base in terms of process efficiency and automated Medicare processing and things like that. Uh, but those are bunt singles. Only Congress can hit the home run of restoring our staffing uh, and ideally making quick strides to get us back to that 1.2% of average outlays that we had always had been before 2018. Okay, so that was Martin O'Malley talking about some of the challenges that the Social Security Administration uh, has right now and they're trying to, to deal with. And the last thing he was talking about there is Social Security disability claims, and it's taking 200 plus days for them to get a response. So when you fill out the form, it takes for you to get a yay or a nay, it takes 200 plus days. Way too long. Just imagine you're in that situation where you were working, you're, you're injured, and now you're trying to 
put through a disability claim, you have to wait 200 plus days. 200 plus days. That's a long time. And so hopefully they'll be able, with the money coming in, they'll be able to, to make those changes. But um, every year, every year, you have lawmakers that want to cut funding to Social Security, cut funding to the administration. Now, I'm not just talking about cutting Social Security benefits. I'm actually talking about cutting money going to the Social Security Administration so they can do the job that they need to do, so they can hire the people that they need to hire, so they can bring down the wait times when it comes to phone calls and bring down the wait times when it comes to filing a a disability claim. That's all we're talking about here. Every year, we see certain agencies getting extra money, defense spending, always extra, It always increases. But then when we look at some of these other agencies, like the Social Security Administration, they're fighting tooth and nail just to get what they got the year prior. And it shouldn't be that way. It really shouldn't. Especially when you're looking at an administration as large as the Social Security Administration, and they want to make cuts to the funding. It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. So I want to know what you guys think about this, so let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one.